Welcome, one and all, to the ancient journey. If you like the video, please give us a like and a share, and if you're into our content, please subscribe. It helps grow the channel and keeps us producing these videos. Today's journey, Killdozer, Marvin Hemeyer. I was always willing to be reasonable until I had to be unreasonable, he wrote. Sometimes reasonable men must do unreasonable things. Face it, the world we live in can put us under an enormous amount of stress. Job, mortgage, kids, pets, technology, COVID, the world can turn into one big pressure cooker and eventually some people can't handle it and snap. It's a popular belief that we are ultimately always in control of our emotions and actions, but the truth of the matter is, sometimes we aren't. When we're stressed and sleep deprived, our unconscious brain takes over. It's the primitive brain that kept us alive as a species for so long. It's the fight or flight brain. The conscious brain is the one that weighs our actions against consequences. The primitive unconscious brain is the one that takes action right now. So imagine it. You're already putting up with the normal stresses in life and then it starts. Someone's crossed you in a way that just doesn't sit well with you, and the battle ensues. And as it appears you'll end up losing this war, your primitive brain takes over. It's time for action. Marvin John Hemeyer had a lot of friends and spent a lot of time building up his auto repair business in Granby, Colorado. He'd scraped up enough money to purchase a plot of land there in 1992, opened up a shop, and set out to have his own American dream. Granby was a small town, a lot like Grand Lake, Colorado, the town that Hemeyer had moved there from. He had no relatives or friends in Granby, so that wasn't why he moved there, but according to his friends, Hemeyer was a likable fellow, and he would surely make Granby his home over time. Everyone seemed to like Marvin, aside from a few customers who hadn't paid their bills on time, but that went with the territory of running a business. In addition to the muffler shop, another opportunity presented itself. Mountain Park Concrete was looking at land to build a batch plant, and they were interested in some, or all, of Hemeyer's land. Either negotiations didn't go well, or Hemeyer got greedy, but whatever the case, Hemeyer kept raising the asking price on the land, starting out at $250,000. This offer was initially accepted, but Hemeyer then raised the price to $375,000, and finally to a million dollars. Hemeyer had paid just $42,000 for the land, so he was asking for quite a bit. Perhaps he kept raising the price, just hoping that these folks would go away and leave him alone. In 2001, Granby Zoning Commission approved the construction of the concrete plant without Hemeyer's land. Having now been left with nothing, Hemeyer appealed, but lost the appeal, even though the concrete plant would block access to a shop, and now he had kicked the hornet's nest. Shortly after his failed appeal, Hemeyer found himself under the microscope of the town council. They fined him $2,500 for several violations, including not being hooked up to town sewer, something the town was apparently okay with up until this point. In fairness to the town, they were concerned about Hemeyer dumping sewage illegally, but in fairness to Hemeyer, this hadn't been a problem up until now. The sewer line ran some 60 feet away from his property and it would cost Hemeyer around $80,000 just to connect to it, almost twice what he had paid for the land in the first place. The concrete plant went up, covered Hemeyer's business in concrete dust and the loud noise that went along with any plant. Hemeyer gritted his teeth, swallowed his pride, and asked for an easement to hook up to the sewer line. He was denied. So now, Hemeyer found himself with a business he couldn't open, fines he couldn't pay, and land he couldn't sell. It was 2000, and Hemeyer's primitive brain took over. Hemeyer sunk a good chunk of money into the purchase of a Komatsu D-355A bulldozer, 
a turbocharged diesel monster with an operating weight of 97,000 pounds. Standing at over 12 feet tall, the Komatsu would become vengeance. Hemeyer spent the next few years armor plating the bulldozer with concrete reinforced plates that in the end would be over a foot thick in places. Despite its size, several visitors to his shop didn't recall even noticing it, but soon they would. It's interesting to observe that I was never caught, Hemeyer wrote. This was a part-time project over a one and a half year time period. At times staying up all night, Hemeyer continued to outfoot the bulldozer with cameras, gun ports, and ventilation systems. Soon he would be ready. He recorded hours of taped messages explaining what he was about to do and why he was going to do it. God built me for this job, he said. God didn't let me have a wife or a family so I could carry out the attack. God will bless me to get the machine done, to drive it, to do the stuff I have to do. God blessed me in advance for the task I am about to undertake. It is my duty. God has asked me to do this. It's a cross that I am going to carry, and I am going to carry it in God's name. Hemeyer's last recording was made 13 days before he carried out his plans. He mailed all of his recordings to a brother in South Dakota before lowering the armor over him in the bulldozer. The armor was placed on in such a way that once inside, Hemeyer wasn't getting out. He outfitted the gun ports with a 50 caliber rifle, a 308 semi-automatic rifle, and a 22 long rifle. And then Hemeyer trapped himself inside the beast, turned the key, and began his rampage. His list of targets included the local church and names of those who had wronged him in the, pa in the past. On June 4, 2004, the Komatsu roared to life, burst from the wall of Hemeyer's former auto shop. For the next two hours, Hemeyer's creation would cause nearly seven million dollars in damage. His targets included the concrete plant, that bane of his existence for so long, the root of all these problems. While the bulldozer mangled the building, workers tried to use a heavy piece of equipment to fight back, which the bulldozer tossed aside like a toy. He destroyed the town hall and a library connected to it. He turned his sights on the former home of the town mayor who had died years earlier. Thankfully, the mayor's 82-year-old widow survived the attack. He crushed police cars, service trucks, and turned his sights on the town newspaper office. The paper had run several of Hemeyer's complaint letters, but apparently not enough. As the bulldozer roared in the front door, the editor was scurrying out the back. All the while, Hemeyer took shots from his gun turrets at electrical transformers, propane tanks, and electrical substations. He also fired on civilians and police officers. He attacked Gamble's hardware store and became stuck. The weight of the enormous bulldozer broke through the floor and the dozer became stuck in the basement. In all, he damaged 13 buildings, 11 of which had been occupied during or just before the attack. During the incident, a reverse 911 system was used to alert residents of the town of the attacks. Police and civilians tried shooting at the bulldozer to no avail. There was no getting through the plating. One officer rode atop the vehicle, placing a flash grenade down the exhaust port, but it had no effect. The local authorities were considering calling in the National Guard to have their Apache helicopter or anti-tank weapons fire on the bulldozer. This decision was not made due to the chance of collateral damage to innocent bystanders. But after it had become stuck in Gamble's basement, the dozer tried and tried to free itself, but then remained still. After two hours, the rampage was over. Hemeyer had shot himself to death inside the dozer's cab using a 357 handgun. Police tried to use explosives to remove the steel plating on the bulldozer but failed. Eventually they used a torch to cut through the plating and were able to remove Hemeyer's body sometime around 2 a.m. the next day. Hemeyer's life and his bulldozer in the end suffered the same fate. Both were torn apart and scrapped. Hemeyer's breakdown took years to be consummated and only two hours to come to an end. In pop culture, the bulldozer was given the name Killdozer, even though Hemeyer was the only casualty in the event. 
while Hemeyer didn't kill anyone, the intent was certainly there to do so. Despite feeling justified by the hand of God, Hemeyer was finally done in by his own hand, all alone, in the cab of the Killdozer. Thanks for watching, and thanks for sharing the journey.